uh, obviously Joey Carberry was the uh, thing we wanted to get into straight off the top of the show. So if you do have comments about this or thoughts, get them into us here. Uh, we'll be talking to Quinny about this for the next few minutes. So, um, yeah, he signed for Munster. Um, probably not a great surprise in the end. How is this going to go down in the Munster dressing room? Um, they'll be very pleased, I think. Um, obviously, the, the fly halves may not be so pleased. They might not be putting out the red carpet for him. Uh, JJ Hanran, Ian Keatley and Tyler Blaindell but look he's a quality player I think it's uh, it's a great signing for Munster um, it's been speculated over the last number of weeks that it was going to happen um, I think it's down to the player ultimately himself now I know um, has he been nudged that way um, we know it started with Ulster having no fly half with the Paddy Jackson situation um, I think the timing and I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago was wasn't great and Joe Schmidt admits that but the question had to be asked of Leinster um, and, and of the players were, were either of them interested Ross Byrne or Joey Carberry in in in, in moving because and, and that came from Ulster because literally they have no fly half and um, um, they wanted to sign a fly half an overseas player and there's obviously a bit of an overload in Munster and an, an overload in Leinster and uh, can they take one of those and obviously the pre preference was Carberry or Ross Byrne um, to go to Ulster so that question had to be asked because David Nussifora has to to grant permission if you want to go overseas and uh, that's how the conversation started I think from a practical point of view to have your your number two fly half um, not really playing games at fly half for his ideal. club. It's That's not one ideal. of the things we don't even really know how good. I mean, it, like, this look, we listen to everybody, and you read uh, Ronan Agar in the Examiner this morning, and a guy who knows about these things and is full of praise from. So we all assume he's going to turn into this unbelievable player, but like we haven't seen a huge amount of him at ten. Yeah, and in the last couple of weeks, I, I, I was speaking to Rog because obviously he is 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 better placed than probably most of us to certainly better placed than us to to. Uh, to discuss what what makes a good fly half, and um, we hear a lot about game management and control first and foremost. If you're good at that, and, and the other skills then that come with it, Joey Carberry is a real natural talent, and he has this flair and ability to step. Great passing skills. You saw the break he made last week. He stood up Hadley Parks, who's who's a really good defender for Wales and the Scarlets, and he has the ability to do that. His passing game is brilliant. The question mark is. And that's probably been the question mark over the fly halves in Munster is game management and an authority and someone who kind of takes control. So he's still takes very time young. to get that. No matter how good he is, it takes yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. But look, um, he's an unbelievably talented player, and um, his uh, elevation has been phenomenal. His first cap was against the All Blacks mm -hmm. eighteen months ago, or nearly two years ago now in Chicago, and um, but he's an unbelievable talent. But the game management stuff is is is. Uh, is, is really important, but maybe from looking at a Munster point of view, the question marks about their attack and their ability to, to create space and, and opportunities and score tries. We saw that came against them against Rassing. Um, good forward pack who who are, who are you know, very abrasive, can mix it with anyone. And um, there's maybe been an inability to get that Munster back line moving because you look at the form of Keith Earls, Zebo's there, Conway, um, there's a fair bit of pace in the back three, Zebo, who's now leaving obviously and, and just the quality of ball and the ability to score tries in, the, in their back line and uh, just have something different. I think he will definitely bring something different from an attacking point of view. The challenge now for Munster is, um, can they hold on to him? Is this a short term gig? Mm. It's, um, it's been reported it's going to be two years. Um, can they hold on to him now and create something for him that um, he sees development, he sees an opportunity to win more European Cups and, and win trophies and you know we've asked the question a few times how far away are they from Leinster, Leinster you know the pace setters they've been phenomenal this year can Munster close that it feels gap? like a bit of a game changer doesn't it? It does feel like a bit of a game changer yeah there's no doubt about it I think it's a magnificent signing and he's Irish um, they're not gone overseas um, it is difficult in the first question he asked me was how will he be taken in the Munster dressing room he'll be there'll be unbelievable excitement when I played and if a new player comes in a talented player who's really exciting um, the Leinster thing doesn't delighted. make any difference does it? no that doesn't um, look I think an ideal situation Munster are going to have a lot of guys in their squad next year who they didn't, haven't produced you can't get away from that fact 
but that's just the reality of it. You were there when Felix Jones went down in yeah. 2000, it was 2009, and he would have been a player that no check at the time was fuming about that Leinster wanted to keep at that time too. Yeah. It never bothered me, and I don't think it'll bother players in that dressing room when you put on the jersey, as long as you bring value, um, you buy into the culture and, and you show kind of pride is there in the any Do they sit down and go, is there a bit of, do they get it out sort of front and centre and have a bit of banter about it or how does it? Um, yeah, there could be a bit of banter, a bit of slagging at times, whether you're in the gym or whether you're out training or whatever, but I don't think it's going to be an issue. I think that's just the way of the world at the moment. The club game obviously fed into the team I played on a lot when the club game was really, really strong and we all played with our clubs in the late 90s mm -hmm. um, and that kind of fed the Munster team where we know the school system is unbelievably strong here and it's feeding into the, the Leinster group, particularly into their academy and then upwards. So they have to do things differently and evolve. And I don't think any Munster people will, obviously the diehards maybe will be frustrated that there's not enough of guys coming through, but it's maybe it's a, a poor cycle for, for, for guys coming through. I mean, when I say guys coming through, I mean outstanding talents who go straight into the squad, step up to Ireland, um, so there's going to be a number of players who are not Munster produced next year in the squad, but look, they've got to try and win and they're trying to get get back on track and they've made a fair bit of progress in the last two years, particularly in Europe. Um, there was two years where they didn't make the knockout stages. In the last two years they've been in semi-finals, mm -hmm. so to be fair, the glass is half full rather than half empty and this guy could make a real difference. Plus Mike Haley is coming in, an Irish qualified player from Sale, very, very talented player. He's 23 to replace Zebo. Tyburn has gone there as well. Mm -hmm. They're not Munster produced, but they're Irish qualified. Um, and, uh, you know, it could make a real difference to them. Yeah, the trajectory is definitely on the rise with Munster next year. But just to pick you up on the game management thing, because it's going to be very interesting to see how he slots into the Van Graan style of play. But just to be devil's advocate for a moment, because I'm all for this. We've been all for this for the last few weeks. I know Jeremy has with, been against it. It's hard with these Leinster <laughs> fellas sitting all around us, isn't it, Ron? Yeah, absolutely. But like, there was a lot of talk about Conor Murray and his game management against Racing because it was the French style of the scrum half controlling the play. Like, is there an element that Conor Murray will continue to manage the game and Joey Carberry will be operating off Conor Murray's clock at 10 rather than vice versa? And as a result, Carberry won't actually get as much experience as a game manager because of how strong his scrum half is. No, I, I, I think, look, when you have a player like Conor Murray who's world class and probably the best nine in the world, um, and we've seen that from, like, to me, Leinster's game um, is they can play the game so many different ways. They have a strong kicking game. They kicked loads against Racing in those conditions in the final and um, Sexton and McGrath kicked, kicked a huge amount and it was effective. So I think first and foremost you need to be, have a strong set piece, uh, good kicking game, uh, good defensively and you know obviously you want to vary your attack and have ability to vary your attack and that's the area that Munster kind of let down and so I wouldn't put too much huge emphasis on game management. It's still a little bit unknown because of the conditions here, really. You know, when you play in wet, windy conditions in the Northern Hemisphere, sometimes you just got to kick the letter off the ball and you don't want to be relying. This will actually help Conor Murray if you have a 10 who takes control a little bit. He's still very young. Um, if he can, and look, I think the value here for, for, for Carberry, the, the experience he's taken with him from playing with and under Sexton, being in that Leinster environment. Um, and that's probably a challenge for Leinster now, so he'll probably take a lot of ideas, uh, the way things are done, the way people who speak in meetings, some backline moves, all that kind of stuff, and maybe his own ideas. So he's got to put his own stamp on it. But I think it'll actually take a little bit of pressure off Conor Murray if he steps up and starts performing really well. Will they have to change the game plan, Quinny? Like, because it's a different. He's been no. used to playing a different game. Um, no, I don't. I think what he'll bring is 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 his own value, and uh, they do need to vary their game more. They're not going to go away completely from their traditions of being strong up front, and you know when you go to Thomond Park, I think sometimes, and it still intrigues me watching the team the way they can get their intensity to a level that you're going, this doesn't make any sense, they're just kind of relentless in their energy. But if you stop Munster physically and you match him up front, well then, and, and you frustrate him in defence, you're not really concerned, even though there's some very good players out wide who can cause you major problems if they get ball individually, you're not really concerned about them cutting you open from 10, 12, 13. And that's been a problem, that's just a reality. And, uh, so look, maybe it'll it'll 
it'll improve. We don't know who's going to stay or if, if Ian Keatley's going to go or Jay Johanran or Tyler Blaine. I don't know. You four fly halves. Bill Johnson is someone who was, you know, a huge prospect, still is, has had a lot of shoulder injuries. What happens with him? So there's a number of fly halves there so now. Somebody's going to have overload. to go anyway, at least one. You would imagine for their own, you know, they can sit there and, and fight for the jersey uh, for sure and put pressure on. Um, but you probably need two or three that are capable of playing at that level. So it, it may be... I think last year when Ian Keatley and Tyler Blendell were, were going kind of head-to-head and Blendell probably got the line share of selections, Ian Keatley then played really well when he came on and was involved. So hopefully it'll bring on whoever stays, their performance as well. But you imagine that it is an issue. Someone maybe has to move. Yeah. Leinster aren't happy about it, obviously. No, and, uh, and you, look... They haven't issued a statement. Normally, at this point, they'd say, oh, listen, as I did with Jordy Murphy, sort of well done and good luck to you and all that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, if it was the other way around, I think, and it was a Munster player moving, Munster be fuming, the fans, the, the supporters. And I think that's just the reality of it. He's leaving a team that have just won a European Cup and um, just won the Pro 14 title. He's involved with Ireland. Ireland just won a Grand Slam. So for him, he's coming off... coming. You know, leaving a team that's uh, outstandingly successful. Um, he played full back a fair bit this year for him, but he's obviously made in in moving. He's actually saying, "I want to play ten. I want to challenge Johnny Sexton for the ten jersey for Ireland, and I want to kind of create my own legacy here by by this move." It's a it's a brave call, but mm. you know, he's won a European Cup and he's had massive success. So I think it's he, he seems to be up for the challenge. Um, yeah. And you think you would think that it, it is a game changer, maybe for Munster. Um, look after him, will you? It's don't not, don't ruin him. It's down nothing there. to do with me now anymore. There, unfortunately, probably. he's probably better off. Up, I'm not we there with him. We hope to see him, him back here in two years. You know. Well, look, we'll that's see. that's we'll the see. that's the thing. Will he come back now? Will Munster try and keep him? Will he enjoy himself there? A lot of the boys have moved down there from Leinster. Yeah. To be fair. Have loved it. Let's it just look at it as a two-year loan spell. He's coming back here in two years as the complete ticket. When Johnny, what Otto about is, um, all is well with the world at that? What point. about your team, Connacht? <laughs> you're a Connacht man. You, like no, I'm from Westmead. You know, I don't know how good you are in the provinces, Quinny. Well, but I was Westmead told you were from Connacht. Well, I don't know where you were getting that rogue. Yeah, you set it up on screen as well at the you, top of the show. You were jumping around Did the place uh, two years ago when Connacht won the Pro Four no, game. You, and you were seen in, with seen in a Connacht. That never happened. You were seen in a Connacht jersey as well. So very like, quickly because I know you got to go, but uh, you're off. You're packing your bags and you're on your way to Oz uh, shortly. Um, what sort of a dynamic is that uh, for the Ireland players? Obviously, the end of a long season, you could see it as a bit of a slog at the point where maybe they sort of feel they should be on holidays. Um, how hard is it for the players to get themselves uh, up I think that? with this group, and, and, and sometimes um, we talk about these end-of-season tours, the vast majority of these players have been managed unbelievably well throughout the season. Um, people are saying, oh, Johnny Section should be left at home. But he shouldn't. Um, he's got plenty of breaks and rest throughout the season. Um, he wants to go. It's a great opportunity. We haven't won a test series there since 79. Um, you're on a massive high. Um, it is still great. If they were to go and win a series there, it's incredible. Uh, to, it would be incredible to have that in the bank leading into World Cup season. Um, I think if you're Michael Checker, you're kind of rubbing your hands together. A little bit of uncertainty for him. Five new uncapped players in his 32-man squad. There's three of his squad playing on Sunday for the Brumbies, which is absolutely crazy the week before the first test. So I think it's a great opportunity, and uh, I know there's a huge determination to go there and try and win a series. Um, it's not going to be easy. Um, Australia sometimes can... You're confused about what kind of Australia you'll get. Mm. Um, they can be credible on their game. Sometimes they can, they can be hit and miss. So I think there's a oppor- great opportunity here for this Irish squad. Rory Best, obviously... Is is a good opportunity withdrawn. for Sean Cronin. It is a too, great opportunity. It? He's had a fantastic he's season. The one, he's yeah, the he's had a fantastic season. It's also a good opportunity for Niall Scannell to come into the squad and maybe get back to where he was. He's had Cronin a lot of starts, injuries. Does he? Yeah, absolutely. Cronin will start, I think, and um, you know, I think it is a great chance for him to go there. Uh, like I said, there's a bit of uncertainty for the Wallabies. They've only one 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 fly half in Bernard Foley in their squad, but. They have a few exciting young players coming through as well. And their teams have been up and down in, in Super Rugby, but it's one I'm looking forward to. It should be a great chance for them to win a series. Well, the next time we're talking to Quinny, you'll be doing something like outrageous, like wearing a pink T-shirt in uh, in the sun and uh, giving us an update on the rugby. Hopefully, anyway. You'll be, Hopefully, you'll it'll be, be good update. Yeah, there, it's exciting. It's good. Chat. I think good it's stuff. been an incredible year for Ireland, and I think uh, it would cap it off if they won a series in Australia.